Um, actually, that's a great moment to um, uh, transfer to um, to Ohad. Uh, You've had a remarkable journey, and I've I've been in the Netherlands and I've seen the facility, and um, uh, you guys have grown very quickly in a short period of time. Could, could you tell us a little bit about your expansion into the U.S. and just the um, perhaps just document how you, you think that other companies could follow your success story, perhaps? Sure. Thank you. Uh, I think it's important to mention we have been able to move fast and to some extent hit the ground running uh, since inception about five years ago uh, to a large extent thanks to our the lifelong career and input of our co-founder and actual RAS expert in the group case clute that has spent over 10 years 30 years in RAS in general but 10 years specifically figuring out the yellow tail um, I think when we looked at the, the opportunity that Rust technology um, affords, we I, I went into the sector in uh, 2013, where the the argument seemed to have been quite polarized between, on the one hand, it will never work; to the other hand, it will replace everything. And I, I think that's a bit of a a natural tendency at the early stages of a new technology. Whereas over time, once the technology is proven viable, which in our view it has, uh, the big question becomes how best to use it. And uh, I think it's quite important to think of the technology when done right and when operated carefully works, but then the, the, what species in what market is, uh, is quite an important question. In our view, some of the strategic advantage of RAS is enabling uh, import replacement. So because it can be built anywhere, we think that building it at the market uh, makes sense. And we still tend to look towards the higher value species since it is uh, not a cheap technology. Um, as far as with that philosophy in mind, we identified both uh, Europe and North America as our target markets, since the Yellowtail Kingfish specifically is primarily produced in Japan and imported into these two territories. Um, and I think to your question of well, what we've seen is that uh, it was important to prove early milestones in, able, in order to be able to grow, meaning we, we've gone through the phase of seed investors, to VC and now into growth capital. And each of these steps was enabled by ticking the boxes, showing that the system works, the, the, the product comes out uh, in high quality and that the market buys it. Um, now, uh, Ohad, I would like to ask you, uh, there's one question which I think you, you'd be a great person to answer. Uh, will the future be dominated by a few RAS players that have access to the newest technologies? in order to drive down their costs? Or will we see more of a kind of atomized industry? Um, I think that yeah. given the fact that you guys have had the experience of you know, building one of these companies um, to an industrial scale, you, you'd have a nice insight on this. Sure, thank you. Um, I, I think it's helpful to look at uh, previous developments in seafood or to some extent general industry where scale does matter. Uh, if you look at... Uh, net pan farming. In the 80s and the 90s, it was uh, an early technology that had quite some challenges and it was more common to lose net pans to storms. As the technology matured and know-how was accumulated, I believe the, the five or ten large players in, in Salmon we know of today were uh, the first to uh, perfect uh, operational excellence and build scale that makes it more difficult to compete with them. So overall, I, I expect that while the technology will over time become more accessible, the, the ones to build scale in the relevant markets will uh, secure a sector leading position almost like in any other technology or sector. And uh, Ohad, um, I'm going to give you a couple of the tougher questions that we've got so far. <laughs> I hope they're not too tough. Um, firstly, I think one one question. I, you're the best, perhaps the best person to answer this as well. Is the is the market willing to pay premium price for um, for uh, RAS raised fish? I, I know you've been. I've seen you in action. You know, um, uh, marketing your fish, and um, I, I'd love to get your insights on that. Yeah. Well, uh, while I personally 
feel uh, sustainably produced local product deserves a premium, uh, I do not see it as a business plan, but as a bonus. Meaning, I do think it's important when analyzing the, the right market product fit to assume you will need to be competitive. And of course, uh, we have seen that our sustainability efforts uh, operating on 100% renewable energy, growing our fish without antibiotics, uh, does open some doors that were that would otherwise be closed. And at times we do uh, achieve a premium, but our base case is that we have to be competitive. Great, thank you. And, and tough question number two. <laughs> um, lots of questions on when uh, a RAS facility can reach profitability. And um, just I just wondered if you could uh, address your own roadmap to um, uh, break even with with uh, Kingfish, yeah. And how would that look like? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think of course there could be various scenarios. Uh, I can imagine uh, low cost systems supporting uh, low value species uh, achieving um, profitability in some scenarios and in some markets. Um, from our perspective, it was important for us relatively early on to focus on proving the unit economics, meaning we are currently in growth mode and are investing substantially in building up the personnel of the team. We have already uh, five full-time employees in Maine and a hatchery running larval rearing for the future facility, but we constantly look at the specifically the unit economics where we are feel already comfortable uh, with uh, the prospects for profitability. Thank you so much, Ray. And Ohad, I mean, from, from your position, you know, there's a, there's a facility in Europe. Uh, you've gone to North America. Um, would you consider other parts of the world? Um, I'm sure there are, well, there are more attractive markets to, to look at, but uh, from a management attention standpoint, we've identified Europe and North America as our key focus, where yellowtail kingfish makes sense for us as the, the first product, but we are and will continue to be actively looking at uh, potential additions within these markets, as long as they tick the boxes of high value import dependent and perform well in our systems.